are two humble heroes. What? You think this is a game? No, I think Jenga's a game. I'm even greater than I thought I was. And now to fulfill my destiny. Because I've got a secret weapon. Awesomeness. All right, welcome back to another Paragon Hero Tutorial. In this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the hero Iggy and Scorch. So in my previous episode, I covered the new hero release today, Wraith. And I showed you exactly how I played him, his strengths and weaknesses, and the deck I used, and the deck I finished with, because I did do a little bit of improvising on him. So, with Iggy and Scorch here, as you take a look, you see that my deck has 3% utility, 1% defense, and almost completely just stacked up in attack. Now, the reason I do this is because with Iggy, when you are in battle you just want to do as much damage as possible because for him you're basically you may be sitting on the outsides of battle anyways hiding behind your torches even your ultimate when you use it you can use it to push an enemy back and you do have a haste attack as well that allows you to run away so with Iggy you don't really want to focus too much on defense even like health regen because you're not going to be getting into battle if you are playing him correctly, right? You're going to be sitting on the edge and hopefully just trying to stay away from close count, close combat as much as possible. So, taking a dive in here, I'm taking a look at the left. We, you see we have two Madstone Gems, a Sage's Ward, two Wind Carver Blades, and an Ash of the Witch. Now, I am always 100% preferential to the Sage's Ward. I do love it. It's a great ward. It gives you power, a little bit of health, and finishes bonus, po bonus with a, another power. So, Whenever I run Iggy and Scorch, I always start with a Sage's Ward because I'll run him either in mid or left. And for both of those lanes, you want to be able to cover your blind spots really well so you're not getting ambushed or attacked by a Chimera or Kalari or whatever. So you always want to know where your enemies are and make sure there's no one behind you. So after I throw on my Sage's Ward, the next two we throw on are our Madstone Gems. Now if you take a look, both Madstone Gems have a 3, a 3, and a 2 power. And that's because it's a two point card, so that equals also up to another 10 points. Then the next card I throw on after that is my Ash of the Witch. Now, if you don't know of Ash of the Witch, it has a unique passive for the ability. So it's a slow on ability hit, and it's hit by abilities or slowed by 150 max movement speed for one second. This effect cannot occur more than every two seconds. So with this card, when you're using your turrets, your ultimate, your oil spill, um, any of your abilities at all, Anytime they're hitting, every two seconds it applies another slow stack. And basically this is really useful if you're trying to chase an enemy, if you're trying to run away from an enemy, or if you're just engaging and trying to slow them down and wait for your uh, jungler to come in and assassinate them. So if you drop a torch and you run away and they go through the torch, they're now slowed, right? So you have a little bit more chance to get away. And so the final two cards we're going to talk about are my Wind Carver Blades. Now, while Iggy doesn't necessarily need more attack speed, it is always nice to have a little bit more when you're throwing your Molotovs. So the first one here we see, Wind Carver Blades stacked with 3, 2, and 2. All of them are power. And the second one is 3, 2, and the last card is a 2 of Kinetic, giving us an additional 11 attack speed. So with this, the Madstone Gems each give an additional 5.5 attack speed when they're completed. And we have a game invite, let's see. Perfect, we have a game invite. So it looks like we're gonna be joining someone for a game. Always good to get partied up because then you have extra people on your team who know what you're doing. So, anyway, so that's it for my deck builds. So, like I said, for E, I like to build lots of attack. And then I run either, you know, mid or left lane. And then I just try and hold that lane as much as possible. I don't really push too much at the beginning unless it's, uh, you know, unless there's someone who's uh, really weak and I can pretty sure I can take them out. But basically, when you're running Iggy, you don't want to take too many chances. You sort of just want to uh, hold back, hang out, and just uh, relax, right? He's not really too much of a lane pusher, more just lane defense. So when I like to run him left lane, um, the advantage of that is you're only being attacked from right side. So you don't have surprises left and right. You know you're going to get attacked from the right, so it's easier to drop your wards in one spot. Second thing uh, about the left lane though is the disadvantage is you have two people for the most part that you're always going against. So you either have, you know, um, a phase and a revenant or a phase and 
uh, a yin, that sort of thing. So for the most part, it's a disadvantage having to fight two different peoples. Um, then the advantage of your mid lane is that you have one person you're going against. Disadvantage is you're going to be going to be attacked from both sides, so you have to drop a lot more wards and be very um, space conscious of where your enemies could appear from. So now when we go left lane, what I try and do is I like to hold the tower for at least the first 15 minutes. Alright, we're going to go mid with my Higgin Scorch. Morgash and a Greystone left. Alright, so here we're taking a look at it. We're going to open up my deck take a look and like I said the first thing we're going to start with is Sage's Ward. We're going to throw on a Sage's Ward and the first uh, skill we're going to throw on is going to be our Flame Turret. Definitely going to start with that as it's the most useful one for defending lanes. I'm going to head in and see how it goes and uh, then I'll show you exactly what I prefer to do for dropping my wards and like I said this is just a me thing but uh, if you have a different idea then you know let me know. So, so like where you see I dropped it, I dropped it over in the jungle because they have a chimera. So now I'll be able to see where the chimera is, where he's hiding, where he's jungling, and then I'll be able to determine if he's going to be chasing towards me, right? And also helps that if he's running low on health in the jungle, I can try and go in, drop a turret, and go for a gank. Not always the best plan, it is risky but it also does have its reward. And here we go. So your enemy's not attacking them all the time, and they may initially get off the max amount of damage. Now as you see here for my second skill I threw on, it's going to be my oil slick, and it helps me get away faster. So if I'm being chased by a chimera, a chimera shows up to threaten me, I can just bug out, uh, get out, retreat, and hide. I'm going to see if the level 3, what I'm going to throw on instead of my next ability, I'm going to throw a second one on my turret. Because what it's going to give me is a second turret I'm able to play with. Four, we're going to toss on oil spill and we're going to drop some ward over here and we got two seconds left there we go we're going to come up drop another ward back in the jungle excellent now we throw up an ultimate and then this is where we start to really have fun Now, with Wraith, he is a really bad lane holder, so it's really easy to push him and uh, get some minion kills really early on. The problem is now he's got an ultimate up, he's level 5, so if Chimera happens to come over and he joins him, he can make both him and Chimera disappear, which is a very bad disadvantage for me. And to harass him a little bit, we're going to toss the torch in there. Pop another torch. See how that goes. Toss one up there. Now we do have a problem with Chimera coming over here. All right. Now at level eight, we have three torches available to us. So we're gonna just basically keep harassing Chimera at this point. Try and push him out of our lane. Basically, we just want to make sure that they know this is our lane and they aren't getting it. Tower 
did it come here and get back there? I have no idea. So, come here and jump for us. And then he got back. And I don't think my ammo pushed him, but it may have. Awesome. Good job, Kai. That was a sweet kill. Did my best to support him. Alright, I'm out of mana. So, this is just actually ridiculous for me to stay here. Because I'm fighting with no mana. Oh, goodness. Wait for our mana to heal, and then be out of here. Now, mid lane is getting pushed pretty hard, but not worried. Haven't lost a single tower. Like I said, Iggy is a monster when it comes to lane holding. So, Morgesh is also really good, except this Morgesh not doing so well. Alright, so first tower down. Not bad considering where we are. That was a bonehead move on my part. I didn't think he was going to come in and um, kill me there and I was trying to retreat, but that was my fault. However, us losing all the lanes, um, our Chimera is gone. We're at 3 and 18. Um, now, I mean, I'm probably still going to use this video for my tutorial, but overall, this match didn't go so well. So, I mean, you saw Iggy, you saw Iggy's an absolute powerhouse at the moment really good at defending and holding lanes but um, when you have a team that can't do anything it's like it's hard it's hard to carry a whole team as AG right so so uh, I mean, you can do what you can but I mean, just take for example like how much damage I can do to these guys I mean I do a thousand damage right now this isn't too bad But at the same time, not a great death. So we'll see. Actually, what we can do is we're gonna undo that. Go and ash the witch at this point. Also, just want to point out to everyone that the one lane that still has not lost an inhibitor is my lane, the mid lane. We're gonna bug out of here. Uh, I believe my game actually froze here.
So I don't actually see what's going on because the game's frozen right now. Um, but I'm back at my base. So... Well, as far as I can see, I was doing alright. Um, um, so... Saying I can't connect to the server, so I guess I lost... Failed to apply an update, please try again. So I guess there was a patch that came in and it booted us out of game when that happened. So um, not quite sure what exactly happened there, but um, I guess we'll figure out when we log back in. But anyway, so that was my basically my Iggy build. As you see, it does really good damage. Um, again, not great you know, armor, obviously, but it does do a monster amount of damage. Can kill minions really easily. Keeps you out of the way. And, um, I mean, you have plenty of ways to get out of there, right? Now, uh, rewind or back it up did cause us some grief in the middle lane with him and Chimera, but it was nothing that we couldn't, you know, avoid with our torches. Um, overall, I thought the match was doing pretty well, minus, you know, the fact that both our sides were getting destroyed really hard. But other than that, I would think my Bell did really well that turn, and uh, even though... I would count that as a loss for the team. It was a win for Iggy. Thanks again guys for watching my videos and checking out some sweet Paragon gameplay. If you enjoyed the videos, make sure you drop me a like and as usual, stay sexy.